Hello everyone, my name is Roger Stromkowski and I'm a solutions engineer here at SnapLogic. In this video we're going to take a look at using SnapLogic's pipeline monitoring API to monitor the pipelines that are occurring in your environment, something you would normally see through our dashboard. So let me go ahead and hop over to Firefox. So this is a very simple pipeline, I can make this a little larger for us here. Uh, so we're just doing a rest get into a JSON splitter, then we're mapping that data and for our scenario we're going to be dropping this data into Snowflake. You could be dropping this into any other database, email, anything you want to. Um, but overall, the scenario that we're sort of working with here is that you might want to expose this information to someone who does not have SnapLogic access. So for, say, for example, if you have an infrastructure monitoring team, a NOC, anything like that, that's monitoring your business, then that's something that you might want to drop that data somewhere where they can get it and build their monitoring for it. Now, if we hop over to the dashboard real quick, this is essentially what we're looking to capture. And so let me pop back into the designer and let's go into the rest get snap. And I'm just gonna make this one a little larger so we can see everything here. Now, I'm using this URL and I'm parameterizing it, right? So I've got the equal sign pressed and I'm gonna append this uh, pipeline parameter underscore org. So that's coming from up here. And here we're saying I'm going to do connect faster ink, right? Which is our demo work. Now, if you're asking yourself, how did I know what URL to use? The answer is that it's in our documentation. So I have that here. Uh, if you search inside of our documentation for public API, you'll find all the different APIs that we have available. And on this particular one, it's the top one that I'm working with. Okay, and you'll see down below that we have the parameters that you could list uh, here. But if I jump back over to designer, you'll see that in my query parameters, I, I left everything pretty much default. So I'm just running this against my org. Now, the one thing I did add here is uh, I know that this is a demo org, so it's got multiple pages when it returns. So I have pagination set up and I just want to show what we're doing here. So uh, we're just going to, and this will make more sense when we look at the results, but we, we need to determine, essentially, we need to have a, a an equation that will give us true or false to determine if we need to make another call, right? So we're basically looping through these pages until we get all the results. Uh, and the next URL is basically building part of the URL above. We're just gonna change the offset by adding the offset and the limit. All right, so let's come in and talk about the rest of the pipeline real quick. So the JSON splitter is just splitting out the entity response map entries. So this is where the actual meat and potatoes, if you will, of the result are. So let me go ahead and click on the preview for the rest get snap. Now in our organization right now you're going to see three documents came out of here, three separate JSON documents as we call them. And if I expand these you'll see that each of these has a status line which just has your you know your 200 okay. Um, probably not something you necessarily need to capture for your knock team. Um, but it's there if you want it and then also the headers. Now, like I said, the entity is what I'm really interested. So under entity, response map, and entries, this is where the actual pipeline data is. But you'll see that underneath response map, we also have total limit and offset. And these are the pieces that we use to build the uh, has next URL. So if I expand the next page, you'll see here we had total 29, limit 10, offset 0. Here we have total 29, limit 10, offset 10. So that's how we pull the next 10 records in. So we have 29 records and we made three requests. All right, so keep those numbers in mind for just a second while I come up here to statistics. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that the pipeline worked by making sure that ResKit does see three documents come out, JSON splitter received three documents, and by breaking apart the entries object in each of those documents, we resulted in 29 pipelines. And we could see here that all 29 of those would have been written to Snowflake. We'll take a real quick look here to see what kind of information is available. Um, sorry, let's go do this through the mapper. It might make a little bit more sense. So we're looking at an individual individual record. Uh, so I've added one field here. Let me open the expression builder. And all I'm doing with this field is I'm basically just generating a uh, date timestamp that looks like this. And that's something that we can essentially in our Snowflake database, our NOC can use to understand when the pipeline ran, when this was like pulled. And the reason that that's important in, in this particular scenario is that there's also a uh, another one called state and state timestamp. 
and that has more to do with when the last status of the pipeline changed on SnapLogic. So that could be you know 20 or 30 seconds ago when the pipeline runs now. So it's just something worth noting, right? Um, and then a few of these other ones that I really want to call out, we've got CC label and CC ID. I'm just renaming these SnapLex name and SnapLex ID. This is more of our internal uh, nomenclature, and then this is more of you know public reference. Um, and then you can change things as you need to for your database. The other ones I want to point out is ID here. Uh, this is your runtime ID. This is a very critical one if you want to capture that uh, as far as getting in, turn, in touch with support. In any case, that's it. You know, you can take a look at the results here for yourself and uh, just go through and make sure that you have everything captured that you would want to pass off to your knock. Thank you very much for watching.